Hey folks, this is Ben Gessel. How's it going? Um, just had a few thoughts here for you tonight. Um, some of you know I, well, if you've seen some of my videos for a while, you know that one of my hobbies is martial arts in general. It's it's not something I'm super serious about, but um, it's I have some interest in it for sure. And I've been... For a while, I mean, on some level, it's been a lot of my life, but most of my life, but at least for a while, I've been trying to pinpoint, I will say over the last few months at least, I've been trying to pinpoint or figure out in my own mind something that maybe some of you guys have, if you come across this guy, have wondered to yourself. And that is the question is what's up with Ashita Kim? I guess his name is Radford Davis. He's had probably he's probably named had a lot quite a lot of other quite a lot of other names as well. Radford Davis, Ashita Kim. So what's up with this guy? Is he a real ninja master or grandmaster, whatever it is? <sighs> this is there's a reason why I'm asking the question because it should seem so obvious. And the obvious answer is, um, he's a charlatan, he's a faker. The reason I doubt that sometimes, though, has something to do with the nature of martial arts itself, and how it doesn't really always correspond with athleticism or real physical power or skill, or how dangerous someone is of a fighter. Uh... Martial arts, you know, they come from essentially Asia, originally, and you had, I suppose, a lot of different styles of fighting. Martial means military, it's fighting, but because we're talking about Asia here, it's there's a lot of stuff going on with martial arts that has to do with uh, spiritual and physical discipline and intellectual discipline and focusing and meditation and all this stuff. It's like a whole range of things that are associated with martial arts, not just fighting, but everything has some link with fighting at least. But in older, in, in Asia, when martial arts were been around for such a long time and as they developed um i mean i don't they didn't even have belt colors until i don't know the last hundred few hundred years or so at least the last hundred years probably at least the last hundred years at least in karate and taekwondo and all that stuff for a long long time it wasn't really like that it was you had, you had your teachers and you had your masters and you had your guys that would study with under masters but it wasn't as far as I know, it wasn't quite as formalized in terms of bell colors and things like that. But um, anyway, so the modern world is very different than what it has been in the past, and you know, it's it's just everything is different now. It just it lasts. I don't know how long, you know, when we had. Technology kind of replaced a lot of a need for um, the importance of hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Our guns and missiles and bombs kind of replaced all that, as you know. So it, it's... In, to make a long story short, and I can keep going on about the subject for a long, long time, and I, I could. It would be worth it to talk about this in depth. It just it's just very apparent to me that you can become uh, more knowledgeable and more um, I don't know about skill level, but you can at least attain a respectable level of skill and still be in some I don't know. The, the man Radford Davis, okay, so he got to a green belt in Taekwondo. We, we know that for sure. 
what we don't know for sure is just how what his his standing is with ninjutsu and I, I I have very little knowledge myself of actual ninjutsu or people that actually are you know that whole thing it's it's still very mysterious to me in a way because we don't we have hitmen now ninjas were hitmen in the past they were they did the dirty work that nobody else wanted to do they were very evasive and skillful a lot being evasive and that sort of thing but anyway it's it's a different a whole different it's like apples and oranges comparing ninjutsu and other martial arts I don't know anyway so I just you know the man even in his prime Bradford Davis so she Kim he was not he just wasn't super athletic looking he didn't look like a master there's all these people that are you know senseis and teachers masters that don't look very dangerous they look very powerful um he made some videos you know he's made a lot of that's how he makes his money is from his videos books and stuff but largely i don't know he does some other stuff maybe too but um his his videos are corny. They're on YouTube. You can watch them. They're corny as heck. I mean, it's hard to take him seriously. I mean, it's really easy to say he's a phony, a fraud, just looking at his videos, how he was trying to train people, supposedly, to be ninjas. <laughs> you know, it's laughable. I don't know about his books. I'm not sure about his books. Um... So, you know, this is a man who probably got to, maybe went pretty far with Taekwondo, and maybe he went to some, he kept studying, he kept learning the ninjutsu route, and who knows, you know, how, again, who knows, but it's, it is apparent that he's not really all that good. He's not even remotely on the, on the level of an MMA fighter. So you have folks like, lots of martial arts um, channels on YouTube. Ram Dewey, for instance. Uh, among many, 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 many others. Uh, Ram Dewey knows that this guy is kind of full of it, I think. Um, you know, in terms of just fighting ability, just in terms of fighting ability, and nobody expects an old man, older man, to fight like a younger man. The question is, was he ever dangerous? Like, you know, like dangerous like a master should be. Far more dangerous than even a black belt. Black belts, in some systems, it's not quite like a um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Brazilian Jiu -Jitsu belt, black belt. That's, those guys are more like masters. The karate black belt is more like just advanced. I, I, understand, I get all that, but... You know, is he who he says he's, he is? I can I have to say he's more of a charlatan than he is a more knowledgeable guy in but ninjutsu. But I don't know. I just don't know. I mean, like, everything you know about ninjutsu is these are Japanese assassins in the past. Um, <laughs> and you study with certain families and have their own styles of ninjutsu, I suppose, apparently, I don't know, and so, if you didn't study with anybody like that, um, they must have not really pushed the idea that you have to be a, an elite athlete in order to be black belt or above or something, I don't know, you know, I would just ask you guys, if you guys are interested in martial arts and interested in this sort of thing, to do your own research in this area. This is a big, this is a big deal back in the eighties, nineties. I totally missed it. I don't even, I didn't. I'm, I mean, I talked to people here and there that were in, interested in martial arts, and they told me about Aikido and stuff. But I, I don't remember this guy's name. But apparently, he was a big deal back in that time period. And you know, and I, I'm glad I missed that. I, I would have. I, I don't know. I can see why a lot of people would be duped by him. So I'm still leaning toward, with Ashita Kim, I'm still leaning toward he's more of a fraud than he is. 
legitimate master of ninjutsu. If you're look, a master of ninjutsu, you'd have to be like on a, <clears throat> a level where at least you know, like we're talking about Bruce Lee level, someone who could fight in MMA and and do well, or pretty well at least. I mean, if they're a master of ninjutsu, really that's what we're expecting. And if they're an older person, they shouldn't be expected to be like that kind of elite athlete. But at least they they their knowledge level should be so, so high. It's also what other people, we know we have to go sometimes off of what other people are saying about this guy. Um, what are other elite martial artists saying about a supposed master? And if, you know, <clears throat> you know, so, you know, the secrecy thing and this, uh, I've heard of it, he, he, in order for someone to fight him to see what, what how good he really is, that sort of thing. He charges people ten thousand dollars, and then I've heard he doesn't even show up to the fight. I mean, what is that saying about the guy? It just is ridiculous and stupid. Okay, so as it is with with Shida Kim, no matter what he's what conferences he's gone to, no matter what what's going on with that guy, uh, no, I don't, I don't buy it. Um, when you if you if you watch his stuff and you read his books, you're definitely not going to be, I think, helped very much, <laughs> if at all. So, yeah, is he a charlatan? Probably. Is he? You know, but maybe he has done some things. Maybe he. We we don't know. It's just you have to take his word for it. He has this invisibility thing and tattoo stuff. I just, none of us want to see that stuff. If we're talking again about somebody who's dangerous, if they are a real ninja, they can do flips like nobody's business, man. Like, freaking athlete. Yeah, acrobat, you know. A gymnast, gymnast level, like elite gymnast. Um, juggling should be no problem. I mean, we're talking about somebody who's very, very light in their feet. Total, complete mastery of balance. Um, you know, of course, the evasion and all that stuff, but the stuff that makes I mean, his videos are just really uber cheesy. Like, he was, it's like he wasn't even trying to. You cannot dodge a bullet. It's ridiculous. There's some of these, some of the stuff that just starts to sound like fantasy dodging bullets and stuff. Who does that? It's, it's, it's uh, that's the Matrix. Anyway, you guys take care. I'll catch you guys later. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Catch you guys later. Thanks.